right, for the blessings, we are back with another video. Blazing hot here right now in South Florida. Uh, anyway, before we begin, a couple quick announcements. Uh, obviously, first and foremost, the Black Magic Essentials 101 uh, workshop and seminar, which will take place Saturday, August 24th, from noon to 4 p.m. Uh, you have a couple more weeks to sign up. You can sign up for that right now. It's going to be online. It's a virtual conference that will be done via Zoom. Uh, simple way to sign up, real easy. It's uh, $56, $50 for Patreon members. Uh, all you do is uh, send me a cash app with dollar sign, capital B-A-N-I-T-I-9. -I uh, or you can send a PayPal using this email address for the, for the Primordial Chaos channel which is khnum19 at gmail.com. And just including your payment notes, your email address and your name, and you will get the link a day or two before the class the seminar uh, that week. All right, so that's it's real simple. To, that's how you sign up. It's going to be a great workshop and seminar. We're going to cover uh, magical techniques on how to develop ritual work, work magic, make sure you're developing magic for your needs first before your wants. We're going to talk about establishing relationships with uh, gods, goddesses, demons, and spirits. How to be more consistent in your work and get results. So this is for the, the practitioner that wants to, you know, hey, I need to get some results. Uh, or maybe you are and you want to sharpen your skills even more. I'm sure you'll pick up on something uh, that'll help you. So that's the Black Magic Essentials 101 workshop and seminar Saturday, August 24th, noon to 4 p.m. Um, you can sign up for that now. If you're interested in a spiritual reading or a consultation, uh, shoot me, uh, well, before I do that, the type of readings that I do offer, Clopathic demonic readings, Santa Muerte readings, Egyptian oracle readings, shadow work readings, which, uh, again, shadow work reading is always good to uh, really understand the shadow of the hidden self. It's also a good reading to do if you really need to identify what area uh, should I be focusing on, what's going on in my life, that is of an importance and a need that I need to really work on. Shadow work reading is great for that. Uh, deity readings to see what gods, goddess, demons, and spirits walk with you. Um, or maybe you're just interested in a spiritual consultation, which as I said, people use that as a one-on-one -on -one with me. A lot of people come to the uh, consultations with a list of questions. They just pick my brain. Some people have specific areas of interest they want to focus on, maybe something on the path or something going on in their life. It is a consultation. It's not a deviation session and it's not a reading. Though sometimes spiritual things happen in those sessions. I just want to be clear on that, okay? Uh, so if you're interested in any of the aforementioned, shoot me an email, khnum19 at gmail.com. Please include the time zone you live in and your full weekly availability and we'll find a day and time that works for both of us, all right? Uh, if you want to sign up for classes, the way to sign up, Number one email I get frequently, constantly. What kind of classes do you do? What kind of classes you offer? A lot. That's one word to describe it, a lot. Okay, and if you want to see what I'm doing, go to the Patreon page. That's the way to sign up for my classes. Real simple. Patreon.com forward slash Beniti, B-A-N-I-T-I. Patreon.com forward slash Beniti, B-A-N-I-T-I dot com. And go to tier three. Tier three gives you access to all the classes on Patreon. I do three private classes every month for Patreon members only, including a group ritual that we do together at the end of the month. And keep in mind when you join, it just doesn't give you access from the day you join moving forward. It also gives you access to everything in the archives. You get access to all the classwork, ritual work, group work. Uh, all of that's available when you become a tier three member. And I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Uh, as I've said before, a, with confidence, not arrogance. I don't think anybody's offering for what I'm offering it for. If you would like to see specifically the classes that I'm doing, uh, Luciferian Magic and Self Mastery, Clopathic Sorcery, Shadow Work class, Kundalini Meditation and Awakening class, Esoteric Occult Bible Study class, Sith Dark Side Alchemy and Philosophy class, Ancient Egyptian Vampiric class. There's more. Okay, Kundalini Meditation and Awakening class. I'm not sure if I already said that. Okay, Eastern Left Hand Path Occult class, Norse Left Hand Path Mythology and Runes class, and I'm missing some, I'm sure. Go to the Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Beniti, 
And if you want to at least see the classes that I'm doing, ongoing current classes with new content constantly being added, just go to the Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Beniti, B-A-N-I-T-I. Click the collection section. You will see every single class that is ongoing right now. Sign up. You won't be disappointed. All right. Also, don't forget to check out the social media pages. Primordial Chaos 9, one word on Facebook. I'm sorry, on Instagram, Primordial Chaos 9, one word, Facebook. Primordial Chaos, two words. Primordial Chaos 3 on TikTok. That's the best place to stay abreast of the latest happenings, announcements, and the different things that's going on here at Primordial Chaos. All right? Um, also, the seventh annual journey of the Black Adept Conference. We're getting closer. You can sign up for that now. That'll take place October 31st to November 3rd. Classes, workshops, rituals. We're going to have group dinners, some hanging out, some fun. We kick it off Thursday on Halloween night with a little Halloween uh, meet and greet get together. Uh, you don't want to miss this. You can attend live in person. You can attend virtually. We're going to have workshops, presenters, just like we've done the last six years. And we always have a good time. Uh, so hopefully we can see some new fresh faces this year in addition to the others that come and there will be some new people, all right? You can sign up and register for that now, October 31st to November 3rd. If you need any further information on that, shoot me an email. I'll do my best to help you out. Don't forget to check out the Primordial Chaos podcast available on Spotify, all major podcast platforms. Uh, Hip Hop and Cult Show will be returning. Uh, I think we did one early this month, probably early next month. A great show. Uh, the last show, uh, the definitely more viewers tuned in. I uh, want to shout out Brother Taja for putting together a good show as usual. Uh, shout out to his partner he brought through, and hopefully he can make the next show, Brother Dis One, who added a lot of good insight to the show. So if you love the culture, if you love hip-hop, if you love the occult, if you love spirituality, and it's connected to your love for music and hip-hop, uh, check out the hip-hop and cult show. All right? I feel like this show now is going to start taking it up a notch. Check it out. Uh, so the direct link to the podcast, the, my contact email address, the social media pages, and the direct link to the Primordial Cast Patreon page to sign up for classes. All those links are in the description box of the video you're watching right now. All right, this ain't going to be too long-winded. It's going to be a little, probably a little shorter than some of the videos, but this periodically comes up and it's come up again. All right. As you know, I like to kind of address emails. Uh, sometimes I might have a discussion with someone and it sparks something. So this was a combination of both. And this is kind of also maybe be a public service announcement kind of too. Are you clear where you stand on your spiritual path and journey? That's why you see the title. Something like that, whatever it's gonna be. I can't remember what it was gonna put there, but are you clear? where you stand on your spiritual path and journey. For those that said yes, power to you. So I'm not going to really be talking to you in this video. For those of you who had to ponder the thought, hesitated, were not sure, you got a problem. All right? I can only speak one on my experiences and from those experiences what I do know. So you have to be clear in a scenario like this. I want to make that clear because I'm going to say some stuff that probably might rub some people the wrong way that some people may or may not agree with. You know me, I don't give a fuck, right? I don't care. That's irrelevant. Okay? And I'm going to be saying a lot of these things because I've been in those situations. So I'm not speaking backwards out my ass. I'm speaking from experience. So there is still this conflict with some people not wanting to let go of traditional bullshit or old ways or old spiritual systems and they're not recognizing the fact they got some issues, some insecurities, some fears, some blockages that they don't not don't want to address. So they hold on to these spiritual systems. It's a comfort blanket. It's a security blanket. Okay, I told you guys over the years. Look, I came from all those systems before I I really started my journey on the left hand path of the occult. Now again, I was always in the candle magic on the DL back in the day. Even when I was in a lot of the ATR systems. Right? I was always drawn to the occult. Maybe not what we're calling the left-hand path today, but I was always, always, always drawn to the occult, to masonry, to magic. And I used to have to, in the early days, in the early to mid-90s, keep it on the DL. 
But when I first really started what we would say being more real hardcore on the occult or the left-hand path, which, which probably started after 2010, 2011, where I probably took it up to that next level. So this is 25, 30 years in the making. And I came from all those ATR systems. I did the Kemet Egypt thing. I did the Sumerian thing. I did the Santeria Ifa thing. I did all that shit. Okay, so I'm 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 coming from a place where I I, I get it. I know where you're coming from because I was there. But I also now am at a place where I'm past all that shit. I don't want to be in systems of servitude anymore. I don't want to be a slave up under anybody being told what I can and cannot do. And the reality is all of those systems are slave mentality system. Sorry. You may not agree with it. If you need to be up under a Babalawa all the time, a Madrina, a Padrino, a Palero, a Santero, whatever. If you still feel the need to be in a system of servitude, then knock yourself out. But I can tell you this, this path isn't for you. It's not going to work. I keep trying to tell people, stop mixing new age, traditional ATR systems and infusing that with the occult, because all it does is create more chaos and confusion within your subconscious mind. You're, pl you're burning a candle at both ends. You may say on the surface, oh, I do it. There's no problem. For yeah. You may think and not be aware of what's going on psychologically on a subconscious level. You're working with different forces, and some of these forces or energies kind of clash when you mix them together. And I've been saying this for the last several years. I got people reaching out to me. They still want to play Aoife and get, get initiated or crowned. Can I do that? And still be a Lucifer and just all this bizarre shit. Look, I want to make it clear. When it comes to ATR systems like Aoife, Santeria, Apollo, if you belong, again, I don't know how many times I got to say it. If you belong to a traditional house, you are obligated to follow your godparents' rules and regulations of that house. It doesn't matter if you say you're on the left-hand path of the occult. You're not going to go into a traditional system and think you're going to do whatever you want. Which is really the confirmation why you shouldn't even fuck with it in the first place. Because you can't be a god or a goddess when you're serving something. I keep telling you guys that. See, I'm speaking from a place. I'm past it. So the ones that might be getting irritated by hearing this, it's just you're not past it yet. So it might be irking you the wrong way. I'm sorry about that. No, I'm not. Let me stop lying. I'm not. Uh, what I am sorry is that it's, it might be affecting you and you might be sensitive to it. It's just too bad. You're going to have to deal with it. So that's what I mean when I say I'm sorry. Okay? It just does not work long term. I don't care if you're somebody who says, well, I do both this, that, and the other. At some point, it's going to clash. This is a path to self-mastery, people. This is why a lot of people, you know how many people, I, listen, you know how many people in the last 15 to 20 years I've seen come on this path from an ATR system, African traditional religion, a new age, or, you know, the ancestors and, you know, and the eternal great spirit, you know, those people who I've seen come on this path and get shook and go right back to that shit. And it's for a reason. And look, let me make this clear. There's nothing wrong with it. If that's, that's what you are, then just do me a favor. Be that. Stop being a fluffinator and coming on this path, faking the funk, and then try to find an excuse and a reason to leave. And I told you, watch out for the ones that say they're so dark and I'm a witch and I'm a sorcerer and I, oh man, I, I work dark magic and I sleep at the cemetery and, you know, all these crazy ass motherfuckers. But they're the first ones to disappear. I told you guys that. I could be here for hours telling you stories of who I've seen come and go that fits that category. I've seen, I've seen people get scared right back into the church. Hardcore. Even harder than the first time. This path will shake the shit out of you if you're not ready for it. This is a path for strong people. Mentally and emotionally first, and then the physical stuff. This ain't for no weak people. This is, yo, this is big boy and big girl stuff. You gotta put on your big boy drawers and your big girl belly drawers. You know, with the big girl belly drawers, we pull them up, pass your belly button. <laughs> this is for big folks. This is for the big dogs, as they say. This ain't, for, this ain't for the lightweights. If you a lightweight, stay in that Alafia shit. Stay in that Hotep stuff. Stay in that peace. Peace, my queen. And uh, uh, Grand Rising. And, and uh, uh, 
temperatures rising and all that other shit. Stay in that. I love when people say Grand Rising and they don't know it's Masonic. Right? It's so funny how that's become like a popular ATR greeting amongst ATR folks. They don't even know where it comes from. It's hilarious. But if you want to if you want to be a lightweight, stay lightweight. It's okay. Nobody's going to judge you. Nobody's going to hold anything against you. But what you are going to do, you're going to get yourself messed up playing with the big boys. This big boy work. This big girl work. Right? This this grown folks here. You know, you know, you know, like at the Thanksgiving dinner, you got the grown folks table, right? And then you got the kitty table. Well, you, some of you motherfuckers need to stay at the kitty table. It's safe there. You know, the whole tap and, uh, you know, Lafia and my, 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 my family and, you know, all that stuff that makes you feel fuzzy and warm, sit at the kitty table. That's you guys that sit at the kitty table during Thanksgiving. We sit at the big boy and the big girl table, the adults table. I keep trying to tell you guys. So when I get these emails off and on that a person's conflicted, they're struggling to, to make the transition, they keep getting pulled back, there's something that's drawing them from the left-hand path. They know it's the truth. It's taking it to another level. But there's something inside that they just keep reverting to old ways and back, back sliding. And I can, it's real simple what the answer is. It's real simple. Okay. You're not winning the war as you make the transition. Your conscious mind is going to pull you back, especially in the beginning stages, to what makes it feel comfortable and safe. You've got to be disciplined to bypass that. And when you don't do it, and if, you, if you're making a statement and a claim that you've done this, that, the other, then it's pathism for you. Maybe it is your calling to be a fluffinator, and that's okay. Because, you know, it's just like not everybody can be a professional baseball player football player not everybody can be a Grammy award winning singer you gotta have a calling for that right and not everybody can be on this path you gotta have a calling for it that's why I did a video a while back many are called on this path many and in many other walks of life you hear that phrase many are called but what only a few are chosen it always gets down to the nitty gritty of a handful a few dozen motherfuckers here and there this that or the other that'll really work in this path. It's a dark path. It's a path of self-mastery and self-isolation. Okay? That's why we refer to it as the isolated consciousness. All systems of conformity are blocked out and eliminated. Okay? And you get down to the nitty-gritty, the real, the real deal. Okay? And you remove the veils of illusion, the layers of the false self that you've created, and then you deal with what's there and not all of it is pretty because you sometimes come to the realization, wow, I didn't know I was this fucked up. And now it's time to get to work. Or you could stay in the fluffinator and uh, how they cut on ring game, you know, and do and do all this false bullshit that they're going to claim that you can meditate it away, pray it away and mantra it away. And that's just not facts. So this is this is yo lightweights. Stay lightweight. Stay in the fluffinated division. Okay? Sit at the kitty table at Thanksgiving. That's where you belong. I just got to keep it real because I get this email off and on periodically over the years. Can you help me out, Brother Reed? I'm struggling with blah, blah, blah. And then once you dig, you find out they're still doing things that's creating the conflict. Okay? Uh, as I've said to you guys before, if you've worked any ATR systems, there's a way you can still work with it, but from an occult left-hand path perspective, minus all the tradition. I still work with the Loa. I still work the Voodoo path. I still work aspects of Palo. I still deal with certain aspects of the Orisha, but not in no traditional way. And I know the traditionalist is gonna tell you, you can't do that. It's against the religion. Well, I don't believe in your religion. And yes, I can do it because I've got proof to validate the way I'm doing it does work. And better yet, I'm getting more results now than when I was doing it in a traditional system. So you can't run the game, it doesn't work, you can't do that. I don't fall up under your umbrella of the you can't do that group. I can do whatever the fuck I want. You don't have to agree with it. You have that right. Just like I don't have to agree with what you do, but that can't stop 
you or me from doing what we choose to do. It's that simple. So I, I don't want to make this like it's, it's not a complicated issue or topic. It's real simple. It's why you've heard me pump in the last four or five years. Are you ridding yourself of things that serve you no purpose? I've done videos on this. Are you still holding on to old spiritual methods and systems and practices? Because why? It makes you feel comfortable. It makes you feel fluffy and warm. Because you're too afraid to dive into the void and the abyss. Because you might find the real you. And it might be a struggle for you to deal with it. I don't know. But if you're not ready to do what I just described, then stay lightweight. That's all I got to say. Stay lightweight. Sit at the kiddie table at Thanksgiving. Sit with the little kids. Have fun. Stay safe. And let the adults sit at the big table and have big boy and big girl conversations. There's nothing we don't tackle on this path. Our fears, anxieties, our strengths, our joys, our happiness, our sorrows. We push ourselves to the limit. We challenge ourselves to make ourselves greater. We don't accept systems of conformity and complacement. If you like all those things, stay lightweight. That's the answer. So I'm not going to get long drawn out when people reach out to me like that. And go into this long, drawn-out response. Maybe your calling is to stay fluffinator, a.k.a. lightweight. And guess what? It's okay. It's okay. Go back to Alafia, Grand Rising. I got downloads from the ancestors. My ancestors told me, you know, this, that, and the third. That's great. But as I said before, your ancestors didn't tell you shit about my ancestors. Because when people come at me with that fuckery, I say, well, what ancestors did you speak to? A collective consciousness of ancestors? Can you identify those ancestors? Can you give me some names? So it's very vague when somebody says, I got a download and I spoke to the ancestors. That's not the right thing to say around me because I'm gonna, I, want, I want specifics. What ancestors did you speak with? See, I'm bringing that up in this video for this topic because that's the type of shit that makes people feel comfortable. And I told you guys before, Nobody's getting a download that's a message for every single person and their ancestors. It's a joke. And I'm not doubting the person ain't getting messages because people, that person could be tapped into spirit, right? They could be getting some quote unquote downloads. I hate that word because it's so abused. But I'm not buying into the fact you got a, a message from the ancestors as a whole for everybody. That doesn't apply. That's bullshit. Okay? But those are the fuzzy, safe, warm things that make people feel good. Safe. Ah, somebody else can do it for me. Somebody else can guide me. All I got to do is be a part of this group or follow this person or be up under this elder or this, that, the third. And as I've said before, I'm not saying you can't have elders, guides, spiritual masters and teachers help you. But at the end of the day, this is your path, your call. You call the shots. You make the decisions. You don't put your life, your soul, and your spirit into the into the hands of another. Okay? That is solely on you and nobody else. But you, you're, you're, you're playing with danger when you're putting that livelihood into somebody else's hands. So, what people like to do is feel safe. They like to be become exclusively part of some religion or spiritual system because it makes them feel wanted, connected, and safe. But when it's just you standing on your own too, being a god or a goddess, there's some uncertainty there. There's some doubt. There's some fear. And that's a good thing because it keeps you sharp, keeps you on your toes. Because when you come to the realization it's just you, there's nobody you can, you can, you can't have excuses and pin your bullshit on somebody else. That's over. Because when you believe and you exclusively connect yourself to a system, then you got these people. Somebody's doing roots on me. I think somebody's doing voodoo and magic on me. I feel like somebody's out to get me. I had a dream. That's why. Because you're not kept connected to a path of godhood and goddesshood, path of self-mastery. See, the motherfuckers that think they're being externally attacked all the time, these are individuals that are in these weaker systems. Okay? You know the ones. You know what I'm talking about. It ain't nothing. Come on. You all know that one person. They think everybody's out to get them. They're working roots on me, they're doing it. And I'm just, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's a byproduct of their own mind. Why? Because they're still, whether it's consciously or unconsciously, under the illusion 
that there is a greater force that they are inferior to outside of themselves, whether they call that God, demons, the devil, or this, that, and the third. They are still a slave to a system of servitude. They are still slaves to a system of conformity. That's it. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it for you guys. And if this topic comes up again, I'm just going to be straight to the point again. I tried ways in the past to like gradually ease people into the understanding of this. It didn't work. Because what it did do, it kept people still holding on to superficial, unnecessary bullshit in their spiritual journey. If you work with me, you're on the Patreon, you've been taking the classes, you see how we do in the Patreon class. You guys are learning to be gods and goddesses. And I want to be clear for those listening. When I say a god or a goddess, I'm not talking about your fairy tale spook sky daddy in the sky. I use the term god and goddess in the sense of an individual that takes control of their spiritual sovereignty and their spiritual path. They take control of their destiny. They dictate and call the shots. I just want to make that clear. Someone who is accountable and responsible, all of those things are included in a statement when I say you need to become a god or goddess because it's a valid question. A god of, and goddess of what? Not of some spooky religion or spiritual system, no. Of the aforementioned things I mentioned. Okay? This is a path of self-mastery, people. Get that through your head. Stop looking for the answers outside of yourself. Because all you're doing is prolonging your misery. They don't exist. Stop looking for things that you think are going to bring you salvation that don't exist. The quicker you get past it, over it, the better off you'll be. And I'll leave you with this last thing. I know the next question. Well, how? Why? I don't know the exact answer to that because it's a little different for everybody. I do know there's going to be a lot of self-discipline to wean yourself off of that nonsense. But you're going to have to put in the work and the struggle. And you're going to have to deal with some of the growing pains of that if this is your path of calling. So again, I leave you with the question. Are you clear on where you stand on your spiritual path and journey? Question mark. Again, for those that had a definite yes to that right out the gate, you didn't hesitate. Come sit with us at the big boy and big girl table on Thanksgiving. For those of you who hesitated, not sure, question yourself. Sorry, lightweight. You got to sit at the little kitty table on Thanksgiving. All right. So ask yourself that question. All right. Again, if you need to reach out to me, spiritual reading or a consultation, classes, podcast, the direct link to the podcast, the social media pages, my contact email address, the Patreon page for classes. All of those links are in the description box of this video that you're watching right now. Final blessings, and we'll talk soon.